Welcome back to the Bookends YouTube channel. Today we are answering a question from Jessica's client. So yes, our clients watch our videos, which also <laughs> is horrifying. <laughs> yeah, Nikki Savoy came with this one and actually she got it from a group she's in, I believe. So it, you know, came through and through and through to get to us. But um, the the question was, um, ultimately, what, what sort of rules do agents have to follow when submitting to editors? And very specifically, um, you know, can we submit one, multiple clients to the same editor at the same time? Um, and I guess the first thing I, I always like to say is the amazing and weird thing about this job is there just really aren't any rules. <laughs> and what I will say is every agent has different ways of doing things. We're going to talk about our answer to this and how we handle things. But different agents might have different philosophies and different strategies. There's not a right or wrong. Um, this is based on how we do it. Um, and I guess my first answer to that is no, there is no rule that says that we can only submit one submission to an editor at a time. Um, I'm sure that some there are some editors out there who would like that to be a rule, but I think more often than not, editors would rather receive the submission than miss out on something because we have multiple things to go out and um, so we're going to skip somebody. Yeah, I don't think there's a hard and fast rule. I do think that there's a common courtesy and like a good practice. Um, you don't want to send an editor 10 submissions. Truthfully, I try not to send an editor more than two at a time. I think that there is a bit of like respect to give the person and not overwhelming them and burying them in work. And also being sure that we're sending them what we think is the best fit for them. Right. Um, so yeah, I think sending two at a time usually is my max, but I'm sure there are agents that feel otherwise. I just think that people are overworked. So if I can space it out, I will. I will space it out, but sometimes, I mean, editors can take up to three months, six months. Yeah. And if I have a couple of great things coming up in that time frame, and maybe there's only one editor at that house that does that thing, or maybe I just happen to know that's the perfect editor, um, you know, I don't, I, I also think there's that balance of what's right for my clients. Mm -hmm. Um, I think there are probably situations where an editor might think, well, I can only offer to this agent once. I think that's crazy. So I think at the end of the day, the editors are looking for great books. And if I happen to have two of those great books, you know, that shouldn't stop them from offering. Yeah, I absolutely think it's a judgment call too. Like, what do you feel is right? How's your relationship with that editor? Because one editor might not feel like it's a problem. Another editor might feel like, whoa, I've got too much here. Um, also, I think communication goes a long way too. And just saying to an editor, hey, I've got this third thing or this whatever. Mm -hmm. And I thought you would be the perfect fit. I don't want to put too much on your plate. Would you be open to seeing it? Like, I think that there is so many different ways that it can be approached. And it really does come down because publishing is such a relationship relationship based industry. What is your relationship with that person, and how are you, you know, caring for that relationship while also caring for your client? I think that's really an important thing to consider too. Right, and and keep in mind that you know most agents, you know, no agent represents every genre. No. So you know, I have a lot of suspense on my list. So most of my, you know, I have a lot of connections in suspense, but there are some houses that I might have a really good relationship. An editor and I might have sort of the same sensibility. We work really well together, or there might be one house that this is the suspense person. Yeah. So if I want to sell to that house and I think that house is right, that is the one and only person to go to. Yeah. Um. So there, I think, there's no way for an agent not to double up at some point or another, yeah. unless they're really only sending a few books a year. Yeah, they only have a few clients. Yeah. But I think with mo most agents with a fuller client list, it becomes an inevitability. Yeah. However, um, in terms of rules, I don't, I mean, they are kind of rules, but a lot of the big five have rules for who you can submit to at the same time. So I think that's oh, something that agents yeah. are always considering too. Like if 
you know, you go to this Penguin Random House imprint, can you also go to this one at the same time? Sometimes no, because they have the same management team. Can you go to five Random House imprints and five Penguin imprints at the same time? Usually no. Um, some of the like Simon and Schuster imprints will, I think, I think the children's side prefers one, although I think that is also changing now. And that's the thing, the rules are always shifting and changing as teams grow and consolidate and shift. Um, so there are rules for the usually for publishers with a lot of imprints under them on who you can go to at the same time. Um, and there's also the general guideline that a no from one editor usually is a no from the entire imprint. Um, there are yeah. some exceptions to that always. Um, yeah, I would I would say though that, yeah, once you get a rejection from an imprint, you know, I think some authors will say, well, can you send to another person there? No, right. because typically, you know, one person makes a rejection, but you also don't know. A lot of times they get second reads, they talk to their team, they have conversations about it. So, you know, it is a pass from the whole imprint, which is far different than agenting because, you know, agents individually represent authors. Um, and publishing is very different because when you sell to a publishing house, you sell to the entire imprint team, really. So I think that's it, right? I think that's it. I think it's just important to remember that every book, every agent is going to call for a specific strategy. So, yeah. you know, which Penguin Random House imprints are you going to first round, second round? Can I go to this person? Do I go to that? Like all of that is a conversation with your agent and it is usually book specific. What I do for one client's first that's book perfect. and their second book are going to be completely different. Yeah. Um, and these are things that are always shifting under our feet too. Like editors are moving, teams are, like I said before, teams are being smashed together, new imprints are popping up. Um, so it's something that's always changing. Yep. Um, yeah. Yep. <laughs> All right. We hope that was helpful. Thanks for the question, Nikki. Um, we got to make sure we send her the link to watch the video. Um, but in the meantime, don't forget to like and subscribe. And we're always welcoming your questions. So put them in the comments below. Thank you.